It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to another episode of You Can Make It with David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today I'm going to make a different kind of bacon, one with a little spice, one with a little southwestern spice. I'm going to be making back bacon, but I'm going to be making chipotle back bacon. It has a bit of heat to it, and that's just different for your morning breakfast, and I quite enjoy it. I'm going to go over the basics of making bacon in case you haven't watched one of my earlier videos. One of the key ingredients in making bacon is prog powder number one, it's also called pink salt number one, it's also called Instacure number one, it has a lot of different brand names. But the critical thing you want to look for is on the label to make sure that it has 6.25% sodium nitrite and 93.75% salt. No matter what they call it, if it has that ratio of those two ingredients, you can use it. If it doesn't have or has a different ratio, don't use that in this recipe. There's also a product called Prog Powder Number 2, Instacure Number 2, Pink Salt Number 2. That has nitrates in it and is used for something else, and you cannot use that in this recipe. Now, to begin making bacon, one of the critical things to do is to determine the weight of your meat. Because you have to have the exact right amount of nitrites per pound or kilogram of meat because if you have too little nitrites in your meat, it won't protect the meat during the long smoke. Nitrates inhibit bacterial growth, and by having them in the meat, you can smoke it for a long time without it going bad at low temperatures. But if you put too many nitrates in, it's not good for you. They have some bad health effects. So it's very critical that you use the right amount of nitrate compared to the weight of the meat. Now, for my recipe, I use three grams or two milliliters of pink salt for every kilogram of pork. Now, I prefer to use a little scale to weigh the pork just because it's more accurate. You can get away with a dry measure, but I, I suggest you get a little scale. You're going to use, for each kilogram of meat, 30 milliliters of brown sugar and 15 milliliters of kosher salt. Now, if you're into pounds and ounces, that works out to 0 0.05 ounces of pink salt per pound of meat, or one-fifth of a teaspoon per pound of meat. And you will be using two and a half teaspoons of brown sugar and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt per pound of meat. So make sure you weigh your meat, and if it's two kilograms, double those amounts. If it's one kilogram, cut them in half. It's really critical you get the amounts to be right to the amount of meat. Now I've already put my brown sugar and kosher salt in a bowl. I've weighed out my pink salt, number one, and I'm going to put it in with the salt and the brown sugar. And then I'm just going to mix them together. Now that they're mixed together, I'm going to rub them on the meat. You'll note I have the meat on a plate. That's because we want to get all of this mixture into a bag we're going to put the meat into in a second. And any of it falls off will land on the plate and it'll be easier to put into the bag. So I'm just going to put half of the rub over the top of this piece of pork loin. And we'll just turn it over and put the other half on. Now, you use pork loin to make back bacon and it's nice and lean. If you make this with pork shoulder, it would be buckboard bacon and if you made it with pork belly, it would be streaky bacon. You can use any kind you want. I have just chose to do Canadian bacon or back bacon today because I like a nice lean bacon. So I've rubbed that in and I'm just going to go wash my hands because I'm going to be handling a paper bag and don't want to schmutz it up. Now, you can put that in a container with a lid and just flip it 
a couple times a day for the curing period, but that's a bit of a pain. I prefer to put it in a sealable bag. You can use a Ziploc bag or a vacuum bag uh, sealed at both ends. So I've sealed one end of a vacuum bag and I'm just going to put my meat into that bag. And then I'm going to get as much as I can off this plate and into the bag. You'll never get it all, just get as much as you can in. And I'll just go wash my hands again. Now, I'm going to seal up this end of the bag in my vacuum sealer, but I'm not going to suck the air out. I find if you leave the air in as opposed to vacuum sealing it, it's easier to massage for the curing period. So I'll just fire up my vacuum sealer here. And we'll let that seal. Now, this has got to sit in the fridge and be turned every couple of days. The length of time you do it is based on the thickness of the meat. I generally go for 10 to 12 days, but there is a rule that you can go for three days for each inch of the uh, pork plus a day. Uh, other people do a week per inch. I find that if it's between two and three inches, if I give it 10 to 12 days, I usually give it 12 just because I'm busy, it's fine. As long as you don't go over two weeks, you'll be fine. And you want to turn it every uh, day or two and you'll note that when you turn it for those first few days there'll be a lot of liquid given off. Don't worry about that, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. A lot of that will soak back in during the curing process. So I'm going to let this cure for 10 to 12 days. I'm just going to take it and put it in the fridge and I'll see you when it's finished curing. So my backer Canadian bacon has sat in the fridge wrapped up with the brining um, rub on it for 12 days. Like I say, 12 days is about right. You can go a little bit less or a little bit more, but 12 always seems to work out for me. And you can see that most of the liquid sucked back into the meat and it's quite firm, which uh, is what you should be expecting. Now we're just going to cut it open. And we're going to rinse this meat under some running cold water just for a second. And then we're going to put the meat in some cold water for an hour. And we're going to change that water twice. All we're trying to do is to take some of the surface salt off of the bacon. So I'll see you in an hour after I've soaked my bacon. I have soaked my bacon in cold water for 60 minutes and changed the water twice. And now I've just put it on a rack over a tray. When you make bacon, it's very important you let the surface of the pork dry out. If smoke hits wet surfaces, you can get sort of an ashtray taste. So you want to dry it out to the point where it's tacky to the touch. That's called pellicle, if you talk to people who are into making bacon. There are several ways to do it. One is to just put it on a rack and maybe put a fan on it for a few hours till it dries out. You can put it in a 140 to 150 degree well-ventilated oven or smoker without any smoke and let that dry it out. But the method I like to use best is to put it on a rack and put it in the refrigerator overnight. The refrigerator tends to draw most of the liquid off the surface. However, just to give it a head start, I do like to pat it dry after it comes out with some paper towels. Just get the excess moisture off the surface of it. There we go. Just do the other side. And now, this will go in our refrigerator and let it sit overnight just to dry out and then tomorrow we'll smoke it. So I left the bacon to dry overnight in the fridge uncovered and it's got a nice tacky surface but it's totally dry which is that pellicle I was talking about and it's really important. Now to turn it into chipotle bacon. Now for those of you who don't know what chipotle is, 
It is jalapenos that have been smoked, dried, and then ground up into a chipotle powder. So you can buy chipotle peppers or ground chipotle. So what I have here is 10 milliliters or two teaspoons of ground chipotle. And I'm just going to rub that into the surface of the meat. Now, if you like it really spicy, you could go up to double the amount of the chipotle. I just want a touch of chipotle though, so I only have 10 milliliters or two teaspoons. So we're just gonna sprinkle about half of it over the surface of the bacon and rub it in nicely. Oh, look at that lovely red color. I love it. And then we're gonna flip it over and put some more on the other side. And we'll just rub that in. And we'll try and get some of it onto the sides here too. And the ends. There we go. And we'll just get it all rubbed in nicely and get it all well coated. Now, if any falls off like that, just take it and sprinkle it over the top. There we go. That is now ready for the smoker. So I'll see you outside in a few minutes. So I put the chipotle bacon into the smoker where I'm going to let it cook to an internal temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll use this probe and stick it in there to keep track of the internal temperature of the pork so they know when it gets there. And when it gets to that temperature, I'll take it inside, cool it down, cover it, let it sit overnight, and then slice it tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. My chipotle bacon was smoked yesterday. It cooled overnight and was covered and put in the fridge just to let the flavors kind of go through it a bit. And now I'm ready to slice it up. So I'm going to use my rotary slicer, which makes it quite easy. You can do it with a really nice knife if you have one. It just takes a bit longer. And we'll just start slicing it off. Now this end piece, I suggest you use it for chilies or stews or whatever, is it's quite intense. But you can see the bacon has a wonderful pink color. That's the way I like my chipotle bacon, nice and pink. Now, I've discovered with these slicers, if you turn the meat every fourth or fifth slice, you get an evener cut. So give that a try if you have one. And I'm just gonna slice all this bacon up, and then we'll fry some up and taste it. So I'll see you in a minute. I cooked up some of the chipotle bacon, and now's the chance to do my favorite part of every video, take a taste. Let's have a good taste of it here. Mmm. This has just got a hint of the spice that hangs around in your tongue afterwards. It's not knock your head off spicy, but it's definitely there, which is just the way I like it for my bacon. It goes so well with the sweet, salty, bacon flavor. It's got just a mild smoke from a single smoke. I love this chipotle bacon and the best part is you can make it. Mm. I have a good woman. I ain't good looking. But I do some cooking. I'm the old fat guy. So use that oven if you want some lovin'. Be like the old fat guy. Like the old fat girl.